deployed at any given moment. Now, this is interesting. So we, we know it's 1.5 million uh, mm -hmm. earning. Now, mm -hmm. what about actors? How many think actors are employed uh, at any given moment? What's the number? Mm, I'm, I'm going to say maybe a million. If only. God, if only. About 150,000. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so those the numbers are very small. Right. Yeah, so, so I wanted to write a story and I wanted to tell a story one and, and I and it's my mission to continue to tell this story mm -hmm. of the intersection between these two professions. Okay. How to cross over between these two professions okay. and why the skills that both of these professions know everyone wants to know them. And that's what I wrote this book for, is to get the common man access to something that only the elite in both cases mm -hmm. i mean you think the lawyers are more elite than actors but the fact of the matter is actors are far more elite than lawyers <laughs>《Superfly Inspired Easter Suit mm -hmm. from the film. Mm -hmm. and we went into a candy store, and the lady who ran the candy store said, What do you want to be when you grow up, little boy? And I leaned back on my platform shoes, Ocean Boom, and I looked up at the lady and I said, I'm going to be a pimp. Yeah, my mother did just like that. Her face went just, and she was light, she was lighter than me. She turned bright orange. She snatched me out of the store and she looked back <laughs> at the old lady and she said, he's going to be a lawyer. Just like that. Ever since that moment, my mother insisted that she didn't want to hear about anything else. I was going to be a lawyer. I didn't know any lawyers. Mm -hmm. I didn't, she didn't introduce me to any lawyers. It was mm -hmm. just... That was her idea. She had she spoke it into existence. Cut to 22 years later, I'm in a movie theater in Los Angeles, just having been admitted to the California bar. And I, I reflected back on that moment, and I realized that it was my mother's dream that got me through law school. It was my mother, with my faith and my mother's faith. You see, she had faith that I could do it. Yes. And I had faith in her. Yes. And I looked up and I was, but then I had to figure out, well, now that I did that, mm -hmm. what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Because I'm 20, what, four at the time? Okay. What, what am I going to do now? to be with the largest festival in the nation, the largest street festival in the nation. And yes. With my people in Philadelphia, it's been a while, so yes. thank you. You're welcome. Well, the, the business I'm here to talk about tonight is Squircular. S-Q-U-I-R-C-U-L-A-R dot mm -hmm. com. First of all, it's it's a it's a fun tale about you know a rare kind of story about making the transition from being a corporate attorney to being a full time artist, right? That you don't hear that one every day. No. It's it's my third book, uh, okay. but it but it's spun off into its own separate thing right now. We're, um, you know, this, the latest is we're talking with online distributors about producing the film. But that's the frontier of it. But in the middle, of course, we have the book, 
We have the audio book. We have the apparel. Uh, go to squirkular.com and or hashtag squirkular. This third book was um, published in 2010. Okay, okay. And that's when we started developing the content around that in the film. Uh, do you know how many lawyers there are in the United States, Ocean Boomi? I'm going to take a wild guess and say approximately maybe about a half a million? 1.3 million. So look at it. Yes. Because there's a lot of mystique around the being an attorney thing. So yes. from the moment I knew I was headed to law school, I knew I wanted to write about it even before I entered the first day. Okay. But what I didn't know was I was going to hate law school and I was going to want to leave 30 days after I arrived. Get out of here. <laughs> and so it left me kind of wondering, well, what am I going to do? If I don't become a lawyer, because my whole life has been in preparation for being a lawyer. Being a lawyer, yes, yes. And that's when uh, Ronald Reagan was our president. And okay. He was an actor. I okay. said, well, actors and lawyers, they all, they're basically the same thing. Okay. And so that's when I began my career as an actor while I was in law school. Mm. That was back in the 80s. Okay. okay. Yeah. So cut. Fast forward to 2007, after I completed my Masters of Fine Arts in Acting, mm -hmm. the thing that people are most, guess how many actors there are employed at any given moment? Now this is interesting. So we, we know it's 1.5 million mm -hmm. uh, attorney. Now what about actors? How many think actors are employed uh, at any given moment? What's the number? Mm, I'm, I'm gonna say maybe a million? If only, God, if only, yes. about 150,000. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so those numbers are very small. Right. Yeah. So, so I wanted to write a story and I wanted to tell a story. One, and, and, I, and it's my mission to continue to tell this story of mm -hmm. uh, the intersection between these two professions. Okay how to cross over between these two professions okay. and why the skills that both of these professions know, everyone wants to know them. And that's what I wrote this book for, is to get the common man access to something that only the elite, in both cases. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think lawyers are more elite than actors, but the fact of the matter is, actors are far more elite than lawyers. Listen. You, did, you didn't finish law school, but you got your master's. No, I did. Career. I graduated. I practiced. Absolutely. Oh, you did finish. Okay, I'm, but I, 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 I'm admitted in California. I took the hardest bar in the country, and I, I practiced. And as, as I was practicing, I was also acting. acting. And it wasn't until oh, okay. 10 years later, I went back and uh, got my master's oh, and wow. uh, started acting professionally for companies and Utah Shakespeare Festival and that whole thing. So, but Oshunbumi is that um, 10 years later and I went back to school mm -hmm. for acting. But I had been acting since that moment in law school when I decided I didn't want to be there. Yes. I immediately started to figure out, well, how can I take these skills that I've learned thus far mm -hmm. and translate them into the acting business? Wow. So let's talk about um, your younger years. You said you grew up in Philadelphia with the Sister Claire Muhammad School. Let's talk about what influenced you to become a lawyer and an actor. Because yes. um, I already knew from the first 30 days of law school that I had, did not want to be a lawyer. Okay. So um, that's when I realized I was watching X uh, by Spike Lee. Yes. Got to this part where they asked Malcolm Little, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. And he said, I want to be a lawyer. And the white guy says, as you know, well, niggers can't be lawyers. Why don't you be a carpenter? Mm -hmm. And I reflected on that moment. And I remember my whole life 
people had told me mm -hmm. that I should be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So was, I was in a whole, I knew I was in a different era than yes. Malcolm Little grew up in. I had different options, options that he could never even dream of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so then I said, well, the only thing I ever really wanted to be as a kid was on TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. I wanted to be an actor. That's all yeah. I ever really wanted to be. Yes. And I never really wanted to be any one thing. I liked yes. being a lot of things. Yes. Um, and I've been an entrepreneur since I was 12 years old while I was selling newspapers. So okay. I always thought in terms of what can I do on my own mm -hmm. that I can own myself. Mm -hmm. you see? And so that's when I thought, okay, well, acting, yes. But then yes. what? That's when you go to the writing, the directing, other parts of the industry related things. And so that's how I got started down this whole path of being an actor and an attorney. Wow. You, so you said you practiced in California. What type of law did you practice? I was a bond lawyer working for the state of Florida. Okay. Okay, so, so a little more detail about that. What's what's that? What's that? So like, if they want to do a road, the state, excuse me, the state of California, not the state of Florida, the yeah. state of California. So if the yeah. state of California wants to do a new power plant, yeah. they got to raise money. Yes. So they float bonds. They sit a debt, like you know, uh, just like stocks, but they're bonds because they're yes. government bonds and they're backed by the government. Yes. And so we're the lawyers for the state. It was the largest okay. bond firm, I won't say their name, but they're the largest bond firm still to this day in the state of California. Wow. They recruited me out of law school after my first year. Right after my first year, they interviewed me, recruited me. I worked for them for two summers, okay. one in San Francisco and once in Los Angeles, they paid for me to take the bar exam, they paid to move me out to California. Wow. Um, um, and it was a great, I mean, I, I gained a great deal of insight about large law firms and about the whole world of uh, corporate law. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but again, by that time I was doing that, I already knew I wasn't gonna be there long. I just didn't know how long. I moved to Los Angeles. I took the offer in the Los Angeles office because I knew that's where they make movies. Yes. I had an offer at their New York office and their San Francisco office. And I chose to go to the LA office, which was the smallest office because I, I knew I wanted to make movies. Yes. And so I realized eventually that the only way to make movies, Ocean and Boomy, is to make movies. You gotta just go do it. Yes. There's no there's no hookups, aren't there? Mm -hmm. I'm your CEO. You know, there's no hookups. No, there's not. There's none. You gotta work hard. There's rolling up the sleeves. That's right, that's right, that's right. You gotta work hard. You have to yeah. work hard. Yes. Yeah, and you gotta love it because then it doesn't seem like work. It's just yes. like this is what I do. Yes. So, so I met some great people. I'm glad I spent time in Los Angeles. I met some great people that I'm still, many of whom I'm still in contact with today. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've just been in the entertainment business ever since then. I came back. I left practicing law officially in New Jersey. My last legal job was working for Legal Aid of New Jersey. Okay, so you moved back here to the East Coast. Yeah, in North New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So you, you've been on both coasts. So do you have a family? And how were you able to have a family life and a professional life? How did you do both? It's a good question, Oshu and Boomin. I left my wife. Okay. I got met. I mean, you know, I left my wife. I didn't leave her high and dry. I left her with a business, a, yes. a successful business. I mm -hmm. said, you had a business. Uh, this is in Los Angeles. We got married. We lived together. And, and at the time, I had decided I wasn't going to be in entertainment acting anymore. I wasn't going to be an artist anymore. Okay. Or do the law thing. Mm -hmm. Then that was that. I was lying to myself because mm -hmm. soon as the opportunity came to do some acting, I was all over it. And I realized that I had to go do the acting thing. I had to, my first love is, you know, I had to marry that. Yes. Yes. And, and so I was, and she was still young. We didn't have any children together. So I figured the sooner we separate, the mm -hmm. she can make her move to 
her forever husband. So, so that's so that's why. So we got divorced. I moved to the Midwest. I got in a play uh, right away in the Midwest. Then I came back to New York City because I knew I wanted more training. While I was training as an actor, I got a legal job in New Jersey. Okay. Being a lawyer, so, I, so then I was actually doing both careers simultaneously. Yes. Exactly. And then I eventually, after two and a half years of practicing law, I, I didn't take the bar in New Jersey. I, I let it go, and I just dove out there. No safety net, no parachute. Mm -hmm. Yes, the faith of my success from my faith in my mother. You see, yeah. my mother knew I could see. Now, I didn't know the numbers. At the time. I didn't know there were more lawyers than there were working actors. Yes. I, I don't think you have to be concerned about that as an entrepreneur. You have to be concerned about what motivates you as the entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so what motivated it takes me? A lot, it takes a lot of guts to do that. It takes a lot of guts. For you to leave your nine to five job, which is, you know, your foundation to pay Status, your pay, status yes. friends love you, the whole thing, and just dump out there and be like, peace, I'm out. You know, that, take, that takes the faith of Job. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So this is wonderful. So show everyone your book. Yeah. You said, yeah, yeah. Is, you said the book is the book a series. You stated. Well, it's the third book in the Poemity trilogy. Um, okay. And uh, Karen Hunter, she she read the second book. Karen Hunter is a New York Times bestselling author. She has a great book out called uh, Niggardly. Okay. Ooh. It's a okay. yeah. It's a really great book. I highly recommend her book. She's a Pulitzer okay. Prize winning journalist. She okay. said that this is truly one of the most important books of our time. Get out of here. That's a, that's a yeah, wonderful- that's a pretty big uh, endorsement. Yeah. Um, endorsement. And yeah. That's what made me think beyond just a book. I mean, I knew going into it that this was the story that I wanted to tell forever is that, listen, not only can you succeed, but you can, you, you can succeed beyond your wildest dreams. You can fulfill your mother's dreams and your dreams. Yes, yes. You know, and the other parallel here, Ashun Bumi, I must tell you, is that Obama, President Obama and I, were in law school at exactly the same time. Yeah, yeah. He was, in, he was. I talk about that in the book about okay. the parallels and the 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 way the places where we could have met that we did not meet. You know, for instance, at the Black so Law. So he, he was in. He was a separate law school than you. He was at Harvard. I was at NYU. They're not rivals in any way. But they're both uh, top notch. They're both top notch. They're both top notch. They're both, you know, they both steal professors from each other. You know, um, they compete for resources. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I was a part of the National Black Law Students Association. I was a national director of community services. When I was in law school, okay. and Obama was not around at all on the National Black Law Students Association scene when I was involved, and I was involved for at least three years. Time, but he was the head of the Harvard Law Review, mm. so he was on the national scene in that way. He was a spokesperson for students mm -hmm. and for black students because mm -hmm. of his position there. And so I quote him in the book, and I talk about what it was like to be a black law student at an elite school during that period, like Obama, like Obama, where we had seen Jesse Jackson, where anybody who was interested in politics knew that it was just starting to get good, that we we're gonna have governors, we're gonna have senators, mm -hmm. it's gonna be popping in the next yes. two to three decades, and there's gonna be people we know, like, like people in the news, yes. these are all people I went to school with. You know, wow. common people, all of these people. I know. You know, I laugh. I'm like, oh, yeah, he still got that crazy haircut. You know, it's like, you know, because some people they like they set their image then in yes. law school, and they still they riding it out. So, so it's a beautiful. I chose a different thing. I chose the artist thing. Yeah. I chose freedom. I chose Odunde. 
Yes. So let's talk about how have you, um, as you went on down, how yeah. have you pivoted during this pandemic? What has this, how have you pivoted during this pandemic? Yeah. So pre-pandemic, a lot of my uh, emphasis was on going out, uh, teaching in person. Mm -hmm. So I, I pivoted directly from any online or uh, in-person teaching to online. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then all the projects that I've had in on the shelf in terms of film projects, my own film companies, as well as other companies I'm collaborating with, those got pushed to the front burner. Okay. Things like video, music, streaming mm -hmm. content mm -hmm. that I had stockpiled, like audio books, things that I've had on the back burner. Have now. So busy with the yes. in-person stuff have now become front burner. Yes. Advice. Living this life again, what advice would you give a 21-year-old self? Ooh, ooh. Well, I don't give advice. I don't take advice. So I know he wouldn't listen. But <laughs> here's, here's, here's what I'm going to So what advice would you give to someone who's, who wants to be an entrepreneur, has a full-time job, but is kind of like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to jump out on faith. What advice would you give them? Yeah, oh, that's good. So, and I do work with those people, right? I, I, it's part of my business. And I always start off by saying, what's the thing that you love that you cannot go to bed without doing? The thing that, that, it, that it's so big in your mind that you can't not think about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's your business. Wow. Now, you may not see it as having a... Uh, monetary value right now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but stay with that and as your interest in it grows you're going to begin to see opportunities where you can monetize your interest yes. lead with your interest so whatever your job is you know most people don't like their job but they might like some aspect of their job yes and if that excites you, like every morning you like turn to the sports or, you know, you like football or you like, maybe you're really into the, the way she, the lady uh, explained the coronavirus. You might yes. be into that. Whatever it is that you can't go to sleep without thinking about, that's your business. That's not just an idle crick. That's, that's what people... You're not the only person. You're not the only person who thinks that this is important. And so there's a big economy that comes out of that. So follow that. That's the that's the only thing I say to my clients that sounds like advice. Yes, squircular.com. It's spelled S-Q-U-I-R-C-U-L-A-R.com. That's the website where you can purchase it. It's in hardback. It's in soft cover and it's also in digital form. Yes. You can look forward to the audio book that will be coming. There will also be a video book that will be developed from the narrative uh, film project that we're right now in negotiations for. So, yes, yeah, of course, the t shirts that you can get at poemity.com right now. Yes.